So this is a very old video that Sargon made back in April last year, and I always wanted to respond to it, but I guess I never really had the time to do so. And finally, I will make a video response to it, because as a Star Wars fan, this really annoyed me. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the symposium. My name's Carl and I'm going to be talking about how the Jedi philosophy is a mess of contradictions and is not internally consistent or even vaguely coherent. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with Star Wars, and there are going to be people watching this who are much more uh, familiar with the Star Wars lore than I am. But I did a bit of digging on various fan wikis about the history of the Jedi and the Sith and what they're supposed to believe, and this is what I came away with. The Jedi seem to be a radical cult of reason, not entirely dissimilar to the worldview of some of the French Revolution religious cults. They, they seem to be a religious order of extreme stoic jihadis who are dedicated to suppressing their own emotions so they don't fall to the dark side. They follow a doctrine of non-attachment where they have no friends, no marriage, or no family, so they are completely atomized individuals who have decided that reason alone is enough to govern men. Calling the Jedi a cult is not very accurate. They are not trying to convert normal people to their philosophy or their belief. What you can compare them much better with, however, is Xavier's School of Mutants. In the galaxy, there are various individuals which are Force-sensitive. And these individuals uh, sometimes can be a danger not only to themselves, but to the people around them. Imagine a village where someone who is Force-sensitive suddenly has a nightmare. And even worse, imagine if someone with the resources and the knowledge would recruit these Force-sensitive individuals and train them as his personal army. And now you understand why the galaxy fears Force-sensitive people and why the Jedi are an answer so that these Force-sensitive people aren't just put down on sight, uh, which is something that actually happened when Palpatine rose to power. The Force-sensitive individuals that showed promise and could have been useful to the Empire, like Anakin Skywalker, would be recruited and indoctrinated into the dark side of the Force and made to swear loyalty to Palpatine, while the Force-sensitive individuals that didn't show promise, such as the younglings in the temple, well, you know what happened with that story. Now, for the idea that the Jedi were atomized individuals and they suppressed all emotion, that is also incorrect. The bond between a Jedi Knight and the Padawan is a very strong one, and this is encouraged. But not only that, a Jedi cannot ascend to the role of Jedi Master until they have a Padawan. Furthermore, if Jedis were atomized individuals, then no one would have cared about Qui-Gon Jinn's last wish, which was for Anakin to be trained by the Council despite the fact that he was over the age of recruitment. If the Jedi were indeed atomized individuals and if they suppressed all emotion, then they would not care about trivial concepts such as a quote-unquote last wish. This is not something logical. Vulcans, for example, which were indeed a cult of reason from Star Trek, would not have accepted this as a premise. For them it would have been illogical to uh, break the rules just because it is a quote-unquote person's last wish. Furthermore, the Jedi are very concerned with the quote-unquote greater whole. While they indeed do not recruit members that are not Force-sensitive, nor do they want to interfere directly into their lives, they do consider democracy to be a greater good for the galaxy. And as such, they work actively in order to protect the democratic system, from other ideologies such as empires and fascism. The protection is done with minimal intervention, however, as they do not act as a unilateral body and only act when summoned upon by the Senate. Now, usually they act as negotiators and peacekeepers, using their philosophy in order to try and avoid conflict and get two sides to come to an agreement. However, uh, the things that you see in the prequels is considered to be the exception. Uh, the Jedi did not enjoy being generals, uh, leading armies, and neither the people on the opposite side enjoyed seeing the Jedi break uh, their neutral code and becoming soldiers. 
This is something that is more discussed in the books as the Separatists actually expected the Jedi to either remain neutral or join them. And there are a couple of Jedis in the book which did join the Separatist faction, not as Sith, but as Jedi that were fighting against the Republic. Reason alone is enough to govern men. Any concern with emotions is a concern with what they call the dark side. This is spooky and evil, but we never really understand why, because the, the Jedi never engage with Sith arguments. The Sith are just attacked on sight. Presumably, this is to prevent the Jedi... Uh, presumably, the, the reason they reject the dark side, which appears to be the side that is concerned with the emotional, animalistic aspect of a human, rather than the sort of abstract, rational aspect of a human, uh, the, the reason that they prevent uh, the Sith from doing anything, and they want to prevent the Jedi from having these family relationships, is because there are emotions that push and pull you in these. These are fundamentally emotive uh, relationships. And if you become irrational and angry, you might abuse the great power that the Jedi have in the use of the Force. But the thing is, they seem to abuse their power in pursuit of complete dominance anyway. Oh, what a load of garbage. The postmodernist idea that uh, everything is subjective and there is no objectivity. Uh, in order to properly read the map, and even have a map as being useful, you need the idea of a north. Like, you need an objective anchor in order to interpret the world. Because otherwise, it's not only just chaos, but otherwise the scientific method doesn't apply and humanity cannot come up with any useful concept unless we ground ourselves into some dose of reality. Now, for the Jedi, um, the reason it's called the light side and the dark side is due to this anchor in reality, which is the Force. Now, a Force user can tap into the Force in different ways in order to create his quote-unquote magic. Uh, he can either use reason and try to quote-unquote convince the Force uh, to aid him, or he can use strong, powerful emotions in order to dominate the Force and bend the Force to its will. And that's why it's considered the dark side. And it's even in the greetings that the two factions use. The Jedi say, may the Force be with you, while the Sith say, may the Force serve you well. In other words, the Sith are hurting the Force. They are bending the Force. And you need to understand that in this universe, the Force is considered the entity which keeps all living things together. The fabric and the essence of life. Uh, and the, the, the Sith, what they are doing is that they are bending the essence of life to their will. Um, they are being incredibly selfish by doing so. The individual just completely dominates the resource that is used by everyone and everything in order to achieve his own selfish goals. And this is why the Sith are considered to be evil, not just by the Jedi, but by the other people in the universe. Um, and we're going to go into that a little bit more further on why that is. But just to gain a better understanding, the way that the Sith and the Jedi create lightsabers is completely different, and it also talks a lot about their ideology. The lightsaber requires a living crystal. Now, it's called a living crystal because it's an actual living entity. Uh, it's an entity that is crystal as a life form. And the Jedi just simply channel the light through that entity, a process that does not hurt the entity whatsoever. The Sith, however, after slaying a Jedi, they take their lightsaber, they take their crystal and use the dark side of the Force in order to wound the crystal, in order to make it bleed. And they do so because then they tap into the suffering of the crystal, into this strong emotion that the crystal is emanating in order to strengthen their connection with the dark side, and at the same time to mock the Jedi. The Sith simply claim that they do not care about living beings. For them, nothing matters either than empowering themselves and these individuals. And this is why I found what Sargon is saying to be absolutely ridiculous, because the Sith are the actual atomized individuals. Uh, in fact, throughout their entire training, there is this ritual of the apprentice slaying the master. Uh, they do not care about any other person either than themselves, and they do not care about anything either than gaining more power. And this is just 
inevitable um, due to the way they tap into the force, due to the emotions that they have to feed in order to gain access to the dark side. And then is the idea that a Jedi would not talk with the Sith and they would attack each other on sight. Uh, while this is the norm, there have been exceptions. Uh, there have been plenty of Sith that try to convert Jedis to the dark side if they could view that this would further serve their interests. Uh, and there have been Jedis which try to convince former Jedi who joined the dark side to return to the light. But yeah, I mean, usually a Jedi and a Sith would not talk. They would just uh, attack each other because there is absolutely nothing to be discussed. There is nothing to be gained. Um, if a person joined the dark side, it is not usually because of a moral conviction uh, that they uh, simply heard the arguments and made a rational decision which can easily be reverted. Usually people join the dark side because they are seduced by its power. And once you tap into that power, it creates a feeding loop where you gain more power and then you desire more power. And in order to gain that power, you have to amplify your emotions uh, until the point where you're such an emotional person that you become completely unreasonable. So that is why it's very difficult to convert uh, Sith back into Jedi because once they realize that they can obtain so much power by... Uh, simply bending the force to uh, its will, then they can't really revert back to the way they used to be. And this is for two reasons. Number one, the Jedi do not desire power for power's sake. Uh, they desire power to protect others, and they desire power in order to gather knowledge. While the Sith, they do want to empower themselves. And think about it from this point of view. Uh, which is easier? If you have a friend and you need to constantly convince them to give you their aid, or if you can just force someone to give you their aid. Because that's the difference between the Jedi and the Sith. The Jedi just try to convince their force, and the Sith just bend it. Which is why uh, Master Yoda actually stated that the path to the dark side doesn't give more power, it just makes it easier. So for a person like Yoda, he can become as powerful as a Sith, but it takes years of training and discipline, while for a Sith, he can gain the same amount of power in a shorter time. But by doing so, it comes at the expense of the people around him, and it even comes at the expense of his own body, which is why most Sith users are deformed and defigured. Uh, this is because by tapping into the dark side of the force, their body are suffering various modifications and it's hurting them both spiritually and as in body. This is why the dark side is a destructive power that the Jedi are trying to protect the galaxy from. Of the light side and the dark side. Just say good and bad because these are huge hugely morally loaded words, especially when dealing with political factions. I mean a real, a, a, an objective view of the the light side and the dark side of the force would merely be the abstract and the material, or the you know the the rational and the emotional, or you know the 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 reason versus empiricism, something like this, or the rational versus empirical, something like this, because they are not um, like inherently evil or something, as far as I can tell. They are just dealing with two different spheres of interests and, and two different aspects of a human being. And the thing is, framing it as light side and dark side makes it self-justifying. We are good because we are good, they are, good be they are bad because they are bad, and we know this because we have defined us to be light and them to be dark, and therefore you don't need to think about this. It cat and it categorizes all things into either good or bad. And this high level of mental gymnastics would actually work if the Sith would deny the fact that they delve into the dark side. But in reality, the Sith are highly proud of the fact that they wield the dark side. I mean, picture yourself as the person that you are. You are absolute cosmic dust compared to the grandest tapestry of the universe. Uh, you, you are but a speck in what is the greater whole. And in this case, the greater whole is the force. Now, you as this little bacteria, this, this little tiny speck, has the ability to just bend the greater whole to your will. Of course, the Sith would take pride in that ability. Of course, they would be more than happy and, and even boast about their ability to just manipulate this cosmic entity, which is called the Force, in order to serve their will. 
And yeah, they would look mockingly to the Jedi who are just trying to befriend it and trying to convince it on their side. Uh, because what's the point in doing so? Like, they have absolutely no respect for the Force. And who can forget the existence of great Jedi who have a completely different philosophy, and I won't go into it right now, but they are not attacked on sight, at least not by the Jedi. And they're usually judged on a case-by-case -case basis. They're left alone. Uh, the only people that attack them on sight are the Sith. So, yeah, I mean, th there you have it. It's It's really not good versus evil like Sargon likes to put it it's more like uh who hurts the force versus who befriends the force uh who wants uh balance in the galaxy in the idea that the force is a resource that should be used for all um versus the idea that might makes right and if an individual has the ability to bend the force then they should do so regardless of the damage and the cataclysm that they can wreathe on the people uh, around them and all things are good on our side, and all things are bad on their side. And an example of this is a Sith Lord called Darth Plagueis the Wise, who is able to heal people and save life and whatever. And this has been placed in the bad category because he was from an emotional... This power came from his sort of emotive, emotional perspective. So we're, we, we can see something that is obviously beneficial that has been placed in the bad category. Well, that's kind of silly, because A, that makes it, sh it shows that the light side doesn't have a monopoly on good things. It is not simply we are good because we define ourselves to be good, because there are actually good things that are in the, in the category of bad. So there's some incompleteness here. There's some hypocrisy here too. And so the Sith are obviously not all bad either. Uh, so this is essentially like a fallacy of composition. It's a it's literal black and white thinking. So this is what postmodernism, which we should call the dark side, does to a person's morality. If there is no anchor, if everything is just subjective and relatable, then yes, uh, Plagueis the Wise can be a kind and benevolent soul that was just misunderstood by the Jedi. So Plagueis used unnatural experiments in order to conduct his uh, quest for immortality. And by doing so, he used the midochlorians, which is the life force that keeps the universe together. And the way to achieve immortality is by finding a vessel, so another human being, uh, another creature with conscious, and he would transfer his consciousness into that other body. You know, how, how would you like to be that other body, Sargon? Like, would you consider that to be normal like imagine a universe where the rich could just have slaves like capture people and use their body as a vessel it, do you see why the sith are considered evil not just by the jedi but by other people around them because in their pursuit of power they inevitably hurt other people around them it, it's just unavoidable due to the nature of how they gain that power they need to tap into emotions uh, and by tapping into emotions, feelings of jealousy, uh, feelings of greed, uh, all, all those feelings become more and more powerful. And eventually, you know, especially like feelings of hatred, they manage to dominate the, the rational mind of the individual. And as such, they end up doing horrible things, not just to themselves, but to those around them. Um, and the best comparison is like how the Jedi achieve immortality. The Jedi achieve immortality by living through the Force and having access to this Force Ghost ability. Uh, they're not hurting anyone by doing so. But the way the Sith achieve immortality is by literally just capturing other people and just pushing their, their consciousness into them as a vessel. And this is why the galaxy hates the Sith. Um, because they just end up hurting everyone else. Uh, take Emperor Palpatine. Okay, like in his quest to become emperor, which was fueled by his emotions, uh, he not only started the war, which ended up hurting and killing uh, tens of millions of people, but he once became emperor, wanted to prolong his lifespan. And one of the ways he did so is by having a planet and filled it with slaves, especially the people that managed to survive the planet he destroyed with the Death Star. And then he would suck their life force. Uh, so that he can live for longer while everyone else uh, was dying miserably. Because having your life force sucked in the Star Wars universe is a very agonizing process. And 
Um, yeah, but uh, th this is like the reason the Sith are evil. It's it's not just like a subjective thing. It's like it, it, basically it is impossible almost for a Sith to be anything but self-centered. The only reason that a Sith would even take on an apprentice is because they are so arrogant that they want their legacy to live on after they die. And they view the apprentice as an extra challenge to strengthen their connection in the Force. So uh, they get to send their apprentice to do tasks that they don't feel like doing. Uh, but at the same time, they know that the apprentice will inevitably kill them and this keeps them sharp. And it keeps the master from becoming lazy. It's almost like a self-motivating factor, if you will. They know that the apprentice at one point is going to kill them, uh, which is why they need to constantly become stronger and stronger. Uh, so that is good enough reason for them to, to keep pursuing uh, the everlasting strength. Because that, that is the goal of the dark side. The goal of the dark side is to seek power for power's sake. And the more powerful you are, uh, the, the better. And this is due to the fueling of the emotions required to control the dark side. So uh, greed becomes more fueled, uh, hatred becomes more fueled, and so on and so forth. Now, finally, Sargon is going to say that, well, um, all we know about the Sith is from the prism of the Jedi. And, and that is incorrect. We do know objective facts about the Sith. Um, the Empire exists, and the Empire was led by a Sith. If you look at the Old Republic, okay, Sith exists, and you can see how their actions are hurting the people around them. Um, the Jedi, however, are not really that concerned. I mean, the Jedi will always try to find a peaceful solution, which is why they were employed as negotiators, and uh, in, in many situations, they could just use the Force to beat both sides into submission, but usually they try to find a peaceful aspect. And the Jedis allow the Republic. They, they allow the system of democracy to exist, uh, which implies the fact that sometimes they would have been in the wrong and they would have just put up with the decisions. A good example is when uh, the Republic decided not to outlaw Siths. And this is why Mace Windu wanted to kill Palpatine. He didn't want to kill Palpatine because he was a Sith. He wanted to kill Palpatine because he would have meant the end of the Republic. Uh, Mace Windu figured out that Palpatine is going to become Emperor, that he is going to take all the power for himself. And due to his powers and influence, he is never going to be held account for the fact that he started a galaxy-wide war. However, uh, if he would have just arrested Palpatine, uh, Palpatine would have been found innocent. Because, according to the law, uh, being a Sith was not illegal, nothing that uh, he'd done could have been proven. And that is why Mace Windu decides to break the Jedi Code by uh, trying to slay Palpatine and Anakin stops him and we all know where that went from there. So no, like Sargon is completely wrong. Uh, if the Jedi were indeed focused on ruling, then Sith would have been banned by law. It would have been considered illegal and they would have had moral and right points for doing so. Uh, Force sensitive users would definitely be put on a watch list. Uh, and the Jedi would have taken a much more active role in interfering with other people's lives, which is what Sith do when they gain into power. Uh, Sith are control freaks. They, they cannot suffer the idea of people doing anything for themselves. Like everyone is a cog in a machine that requires to serve the Sith in power. Now, since time is short, I'll just uh, address one last common misconception that I see on the internet. And that is the one that will bring balance to the force. A lot of people are pointing out that by killing the Jedi Order, Anakin did create balance to the Force. But they don't understand what the Jedi really mean by that. Uh, as I mentioned before, the Force is considered to be a living organism. And just like a human body, it has homeostasis. Uh, meaning that when everything is in balance, then the body is healthy. And when the balance is thrown out of whack, then the body is sick. It is diseased and it is dying. So what the Jedi mean by bringing balance to the Force, they mean by healing the Force. And the dark side, by using the Force to their will, by bending it, uh, they're like a virus. They're like a disease that is hurting the universe. Uh, their use for power causes the equivalent of global warming in the Star Wars universe. Um, and, and, you know, like when you look at the movie, you don't really get to see um, Sifts displaying uh, the type of power that you get to see it in the books. I mean, 
Um, you, you had previous Sith Emperors, especially in the Old Republic, that were able to cause interplanetary storms. They, they were able to destroy uh, big chunks of the galaxy by just tapping into raw force power and, and doing a lot of harm. Uh, and by cleansing these individuals, by, by forbidding them from using their power in order to hurt the Force, that is what the Jedi mean by bringing balance to it. They, they're talking about healing it. So, uh, overall, it's not the philosophy of the Sith that the Jedi have a problem with. It's their reckless use of power that is hurting the cosmos. Anyway, uh, I hope you liked this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and I'll see you guys there.